Hello and welcome. This lab will demonstrate performing particle size analysis of soils, or more commonly called a sieve analysis. It will cover the standards ASTM D421, 422, and AASHTO T88. It is to determine the grain size of coarse grain material, i.e. greater than a number 200 sieve. The items needed to perform this test are 500 grams of fine sandy material, an oven, balance, tools to clean off the sieves, and of course the sieve and the sieve shaker. The first thing we need to do is weigh out our material. If you are planning on taking it from a larger sample, then you will want to use a sample splitter to get a representative sample. The sample size is determined by the maximum particle size of the material. In this case, we will be using a 500 gram sample. Once we have our sample and have it weighed, then we will put it into an oven to get a dry sample weight. We will weigh it first so we can also get a moisture content. That doesn't help with the sieve analysis, but it does give additional data for the engineer to use. Once our sample is dry and cool to room temperature, we will get a dry unit weight. At this point, we will need to wash out the fines or the minus 200 material. This is the dividing point between sands and silts. Once the sample has clear water coming from the sieve, you will place it into a pan and remove as much of the excess water as possible. Then place it back in the oven to dry. When dry, remove the sample from the oven and cool the room temperature. Congratulations, you are now ready to sieve your material. Wasn't that easy? Step two is to sieve the material. In order to do this, we will need to determine the sieves that we want to use. We typically choose the sizes to get a representative distribution of the material without overloading one or more sieves. There are standard sieve stacks that are used or they are called out by the agency that you are doing the work for. Refer to the chart in your soil manual for standard sieve stacks. Try saying that fast for three times. For the material we will be using, we will be using a 3 8 number 4, number 10, a number 20, a number 40, a number 60, a number 100, and a number 200 sieve. Note that as the numbers get larger, the mesh size becomes smaller. We'll also add a pan to catch the fines and a lid so we don't lose materials. Pouring the material in the top of the sieve stack, we put on the lid and the cover plate for the sieve shaker. The sieve shaker we'll be using is called a rototap. You will see why when you see it working. We will set the sieves in the machine and lock them in place to get started. Set the timer to 10 minutes. You will see the rotation and the tapping of the machine. After 10 minutes, we will remove the sieve and weigh out the individual sieves.
You need to make sure the sieves are completely cleaned off from all the material that may be stuck in the mesh. To do this, we will use two different brushes. The coarse brush we will use for sieves down to the number 40 screen. And the soft brush we will use for sieves with mesh sizes smaller than that, so that the screens are not damaged. The weight of each screen will be weighed and added to the weight of the last screen in an accumulated total. This concludes our sieve analysis lab. For the data set and for further information, contact your TAs.